what the f happened to K1? A real elimination tournament in which only the best makes it to the finals and only one can be the champion. You love Dragon Ball Z and always wish to see such a tournament in real life. Then you have come to the right place. K1. But what the f happened to K1? From amazing fights that were so incredible that you can only see them in movies or anime. When a 170 pound fighter knocked out a 287 pound fighter and a giant Korean guy fighting against a huge American, we will find out today what the f happened to K1. From corruption to the Yakuza, an unbelievable story. Hi, this is History Recaps and this is the amazing story of K1 and how it sadly ended and lost its popularity. And if you don't know, now you know. Illegal Gambling 2014, July 26, Pattaya We witnessed the historic event at the K1 World Max Final that took place at Pattaya Indoor Stadium. We are talking about the fight between Buakov Banchamek and the German Enrico Kehl. After three rounds, the judges declared the fight a draw, so an extra round was to be fought, but which didn't happen, since Buakau unexpectedly left the ring before the verdict was announced. Then I knew K1 fucked up. I mean, this is not the first time that this happened to the fighter. Since Buakau's arrival in Pattaya, Banchamak's death knew that Buakau was going to lose anyway and that there might be two extra rounds. The team heard about the possibility of one or two extra rounds already at 7 pm. Buakau stated that the organization offered him a higher purse if he would have lost, but for Buakau, there was no way he would take this dirty money. So he left even. This would mean to not get any money and losing his contract. Buakau is one of the greatest Muay Thai fighters in history and still competes to this day. The Dragon Ball Z Tournament Legends were born in K1 from Mark Hunt to Buakau. Musashi and Masato played also a big role to the downfall of K1, but to this point later. The K1 World Grand Prix, also known as K1 World GP, is an elimination kickboxing tournament that has been held annually since 1993 by the K1 organization. Each year, K1 holds various of 16 min, 8 match Grand Prix style tournaments throughout the world to determine which of the 16 fighters will compete in the K1 World GP. Usually fighters of the quarterfinals of the 16-man 8-match tournament are paired by drawing. The whole event is combined with a ceremony and a press conference. The whole process looks like a lottery show. In the beginning, with all fighters pulling a ball from a glass bowl. The balls represent numbers 1 to 8, which determine the fighter's order in choosing a position from a giant tournament tree figure by standing in front a drawn bracket on the poster which represents the fighter's corner color and the line number of the match. The next fighter does the same, but he can now choose between challenging the one on the stage or an empty section. This procedure goes on until one fighter remains, who has no choice but to fill one slot left next to the one lone fighter. This system gives a freedom of choice and tactics to the fighters with the help of a little luck. You have to choose very wise, because if you fight with the strongest fighter in the beginning, you might have no power for the next fight, or you lost already the game. David and Goliath This idea that the best way to fight is to cheat and to drain all yourself of fluids and then pretend that you're 160 pounds, and then get back on the scale, you know, 15 hours later at 185, that's fucking crazy. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That's, you're not really a 160 pound fighter, you're a 185 pound fighter who almost died. But not here. Mighty Mo, a kickboxer from Zamoa, the man with one of the most powerful overhands in history, was fighting in the Grand Prix final in 2004 against his much smaller opponent who was only half the size of Mighty Mo. People were excited and it was pretty clear that Mighty Mo would leave as a winner. The Thai fighter, Kao Klai, could feel every hit from his giant opponent, but he was fast and wanted to win this fight when suddenly the unbelievable happened. Kao Klai, the Thai boxer from Thailand, weighing only 170 pounds, knocked out Mighty Mo, the 287 pounds fighter. Something that would be always remembered by sports fans. As he was able to do the impossible, they gave him a new fight. 
Kaoklai standing 5 feet and 11 inches tall also fought against the Colossus from Korea. Hong Man Choi standing 7 feet and 2 inches tall. Something like this you might have only seen in action movies or Dragon Ball Z. But even this fight Whoa! was David against Goliath. The TIE fighter could not win against his much taller opponent. He stood no chance. David could not win this time against Goliath. Even this Korean fighter was not very skilled. He became quite famous in his home country as well outside of Korea. Originally he was a ringer in Korea and actually wanted to become a dancer because he didn't really like fighting. But he was too tall to make his dream come true to become a K-pop idol. A fight that will be remembered very much is the fight between Bob Zapp, the Beast, who began his career by the Chicago Bears as a football player, and Hong Man Choi, the Colossus. Both were real life monsters. Bob Zapp with his huge stature and Hong Man Choi with his height. Even both didn't really have the skills of a Remy Bonjaski or other fighters. This was entertainment on the highest level. K1 was almost like wrestling. Everybody had his own character and with the elimination system it really felt much different than the fights you see today. Here you could not really choose who will be your last opponent and it was exciting to watch. But unlike wrestling, here you could find your favorite fighters knocking out others. So what the f*** happened to K1? The Silver Wolf Masato, the 5 feet and 9 inches tall fighter, brought K1 to a new level. The kickboxer, not only an outstanding fighter, was also loved by the Japanese fans. Especially Japanese women loved him. On February 11, 2002, Masato first participated in the K1 Max tournament. This tournament was televised all around Japan. On May 11, 2002, he participated in K1 World Max 2002 World Tournament Final. He beat Duan Ludwig by unanimous decision in the third round. In the next fight, he was knocked down by Albert Kraus at the second round and lost by unanimous decision in the semi final. Even though he did not win the title, Japanese K1 fans loved Masato. On the 5th of July 2003, Masato was invited again to join the K1 World Max 2003 World Tournament Final. He defeated the Greek kickboxer Mike Zambidis in the quarterfinals by a split decision after a close fight. He then moved on to the semi finals to fight Thai kickboxer Sagedao Kiat Puton who he defeated via a right uppercut KO. Masato then moved on to fight in his first K1 World Max Final for the title against Albert Kraus, whom he lost before and finally managed to defeat Kraus via a left hook knockout in the second round, making him the new K1 World Max Champion. This brought Masato more fame and Masato became worldwide well known. Also it brought a lot of attention to the Japanese population and made K1 more famous in Japan. Masato fought many times more in the K1 tournaments. On October 1st, 2008, Masato won a second K1 Max title, defeating Yoshihiro Sato and Arto Kishenko. In 2009, Masato fought against Andy Sauer, whom he lost to before. Masato won the fight after 5 rounds, where he dropped Suwa with a right hand. After this fight, Masato retired. The so-called handsome Silver Wolf had a huge fan base and played a big role for the success of the K1 tournaments. Japanese fans wanted to have a Japanese champion, but after Masato retired in 2009, K1 couldn't find anyone that could equal his level of popularity. Because of this, major Japanese TV deals were cancelled and they couldn't make as much money as before. The K1 ship slowly started to sink. Prison and Yakuza April 1993, the founder Ishii staged the K1 tournament in the Yoyogi Hall, Tokyo. Ishii said that he chose the K since it was the first letter in the names of Karate, Kickboxing, Kung Fu, Kempo and many other combat sports. K1's official website states that the K also stands for King. Over the next 10 years, the K1 competition expanded to 24 events each year across Japan, Europe and North America. In January 2003, Black Belt magazine named Ishii as the man of the year for 2002. Together with K1 fighter Andy Huck, Ishii supported the production of the Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. In the PlayStation video game titled K1's Revenge, he also appears as the fighting boss, Master Ishii, whose character can be unlocked in the video game when completing the single player mode for the first time. K1 made a good amount of money with the fights, but was also a money laundering operation for the Yakuza for a very long time. Both venues spent outrageous amounts of money in proportion to what they made. 
Katsuyoshi Ishii actually went to jail in 2005 over tax evasion charges, as the police couldn't find proven evidence of his connection to the Yakuza. After this, K1 operations were taken over by Sadaharu Tanikawa, a sports journalist and a friend of Ishii's. He was famous in Tokyo for being deep involved in Tokyo's underworld. A huge problem that combat sports face in the late 20s was declining interest in the Japanese market. As I mentioned before with the Japanese fighter Masato. Getting a major Japanese TV deal is really hard to do. And as audiences began to dry up, sponsors and TV partners began backing out. The first huge blow to K1 was the loss of its Tokyo Broadcasting System deal. Furthermore, audience began dwindling, making it difficult to book a venue like the Saitama Super Arena. Also with the connection to the Yakuza and the rigged fights, K1 could not maintain a clean image. Eventually, K1 lost so much money that it could not afford to pay the fighters. Which is when things blew up into a major scandal as more K1 All-Stars began complaining about it to the press. Tanikawa tried to find new financial backers for K1, but he claimed that Ishii was not willing to license the K1 brand to another company. At the end, the K1 brand was sold to a Japanese holding company and in January 2012, K1 Global Holdings Limited, a company registered in Hong Kong, acquired the rights to K1 and is the current organizer of K1 events worldwide. Even K1 might still exist, it fails to be as big as the UFC, one championship or other fighting events. But the good memories to have watched the most unbelievable fights in history will always stay. Maybe one day it will come back and will show the world again legendary fights. And if you want to know how a white man became a Yakuza, watch this video. Or how a Korean gangster became a YouTube star. Watch this video. If you like this video, subscribe, like and hit the bell. Thanks for watching.